Now going into February, into February now, there was a, there was a celebration done by the Romans called the Lupercalia. And the Lupercalia was based upon their gods of Pan and Juno. And um, they also, February is actually named after one of their gods as well. And so this is a time where you're coming out of the winter and you're going toward the spring season. And so they used to uh, have large gatherings of young people and they would take the name of women, put them in a large container, and the men would choose them and literally have a sexual relationship. So it was based upon this, you know, Cupid concept. The Greek word is uh, eros. This is modern day Valentine's? Yeah, so I want to tell you where, 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 where it comes in now. Yeah. The Greek word is eros, erotica. Mm -hmm. Okay, so erotica is, is basically sexuality. And so that, that was the main issue on this occasion. And this is where you get cupids from and hearts and things like that. Because this is actually the ceremony uh, of, you know, uh, open sexuality. What happened was they combined this with an individual named Valentine who in the Roman times, in the, in the third century of the Roman era, he was protecting young people. The Romans said, no marriage, because we want men to fight strong in, in battle, so we're not going to let you get married. Valentine, you know, a religious priest, he disagreed with this. They put him in jail. He went against the state. Eventually, they executed him. And on the day of his execution, he wrote a letter to two of the young people getting married, and he said, from your Valentines. So that's where Valentine, he's St. Valentine's. So, so, so they took the concept of the open sexuality, put the name of, of a Christian priest on it, so it seems like a holy day, but actually it's the open sexuality of the Lupercalia. And that is the dangerous thing uh, for Muslims and people of conscience to get involved in this, because what happens is pornography, erotica, this overcomes everything else. So it seems like it's innocent. It's like they say, a wolf in sheep's clothing. It seems like it's innocent because Valentine was protecting young people. But the reality is, it is an occasion where more people commit fornication and adultery, where rape happens, unwanted pregnancy. It is actually a dangerous time. So they take this, uh, this Christian man, his name is Valentine, put his name on top of it and call it Valentine's? Right. So he, he is an innocent person. He yeah. is a a religious person who's protecting young people yeah. and wanting them to get married according to the rules of the church. Yeah. But, but, the, but the ceremony that's underneath, the current that's underneath, is loose sexuality. And, and this is where you see pictures of the Cupid. Because this is Cupid, his Greek name is Eros. Yeah. That's erotica. Uh -huh. And that is the reason why you will see in many of the movies uh, today, erotica is an overriding um, concept. So... The, the movie stars are in space and they're fighting aliens and someone falls in love. They're under the ocean fighting you know, a, a beast under the ocean, someone falls in love. They're playing baseball or basketball, somebody falls in love. Every movie they're fallen in love. Why? Erotica. So erotica is this uh, concept coming out of the Greek culture that um, you know, pushed the people towards uh, loose, open sexual relationships. And this, of course, is very destructive to society. Not only is it going against you know, the law of God, but secondly, um, it creates unwanted pregnancies, uh, sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, it is one of the big problems and plagues in the world today when people do not organize their life, take responsibility for their sexuality. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of damage that actually comes along with it, especially for the women. And so therefore, we're saying to Muslims, don't play around with the devil. Don't play around with evil things and think that it is uh, sport and play. Because what is happening is that young people are being uh, fooled into focusing their life on their sexuality, as opposed to fo focusing their life on their education, on their physical fitness, uh, and then grow into their sexuality. This is how societies develop themselves over the centuries. And of course, the last revelation you know, uh, of the Qur'an uh, uh, brought us the beautiful example of the husband and the wife and the family and how people can protect themselves and how sexuality can actually be uh, a beautiful thing. It can be a halal, permissible thing. 
and not something wild and, and, and uncontrolled. Mm. Meaning that it appears to be innocent on the outside. Yeah. And you know, if a person is, if a boy is passing a comment to a girl or vice versa, there's nothing wrong with that in, in the essence. The problem is, is that the, the socialization, that the society itself teaches people how to take it a step further. And so when they watch the television programs or movies, then they will see how it goes a step further. Even cartoons, the two ducks, you know, in the cartoons Even are falling ducks. in love. Even ducks. Donald right? Duck. I mean, everybody's <laughs> falling in love now. Yeah. And so that's erotica. And so the dangerous thing is it opens up the door, you know, to a bottomless pit. You know, it's a dangerous area because sexuality is a natural thing. And when we look at, at the Quran, it tells us, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الزِّنَا إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَاهِشَةً وَسَاءَ سَبِيلًا The Quran, the Last Testament says, do not come close to fornication and adultery because it is an abomination and it will destroy everything in the path. Now, other sins do not kill, do not steal, do not be jealous of your neighbor. You know, Allah says, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Don't kill innocent people. Allah didn't say don't commit adultery. He said don't come near adultery. Now what Islam is saying about sexuality uh, is very important because the creator of the heavens and the earth uh, is revealing to people there are certain actions that you shouldn't do. You shouldn't kill, you shouldn't steal, you shouldn't be jealous of your neighbor, um, you shouldn't you know, be involved in magic and uh, taking of interest and so forth and so on. But when it comes to adultery and fornication, Allah says, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الزِّنَا إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَاهِشَةً وَسَاءَ سَبِيلًا in Surah Al-Isra. So it says, don't come near fornication, don't come near adultery, because it is an abomination and it will destroy everything in the past. So this is a dangerous um, thing. It, it doesn't say, don't commit adultery. It said, don't come near it. Now why is there a difference between uh, killing and adultery because killing is not a natural thing and any human being who sees another person killed it should be repulsed by that it's an ugly detestable thing but sexuality that's what our bodies are created for and so a man is naturally attracted to a woman a woman is attracted to a man so that's why Allah said don't come near it because it's, a, it's something that we want to do we are built to do that in order for the species you know, to, to maintain itself. So therefore, what Islam is saying is that yes, have sexuality, but do it within the confines of marriage. Do it in an organized fashion, where the man respects the woman, where the, you know, the family is set up, you know, where he takes care of his children. That's the way it is. The Lupercalia, the Valentine's erotica concept, is uncontrolled, undisciplined sexuality. And you'll find there are groups in Christianity and Judaism and other religions that know about the history of the Lupercalia. They know this. And they also are protecting themselves and their sexuality. There are Christian groups who give out a ring. They, they, they pledge themselves, they put on a ring, and they say, we, we, we are pledging ourselves to, be, to, to have sex in marriage. We're not going to be involved in illegal sex until we get married. These are Christian groups because this is the basis in all upstanding religions you know, to protect the family, to protect the, the sexuality, and therefore you protect society. And actually, if you looked at America um, before 40 years, even 30 years, you will see that, that most people um, actually waited until they were in their late teens, 20s, you know, be, before they even started to date. And before that, uh, they wouldn't have any uh, sexual relationships until they were married. This is how this society actually was in the past. It's the basis of societies all over the world. And it's only recently when erotica now enters into Hollywood and, and literature and it starts to overtake everything and, and changing society. And then, you know, people start, um, you know, taking off their clothes. Originally, when people used to swim, they had long clothings. If you look at people in the early 20th century, a, a woman would have a, a, a bathing suit that covered most of her body. I can remember when I was young, growing up um, in America, in Boston, and I watched a movie called I Love Lucy. Yes. And uh, in, in that program, Lucy and her husband, according to the rules of television at that time, they could not sleep in the same bed. 
So therefore, when nighttime came, Lucy would go to her bed and her husband would go to his bed. Now look what's on television. Now it's like XXX in a normal movie. And what it is leading to is a society that has no limits, that where modesty is gone and where respect for the family is gone. And this is very destructive and dangerous to the whole society. And we are seeing the rise of sexually transmitted diseases. Having herpes is almost a common thing in, in, in some parts of North America. I'm shocked to see how many people actually are carrying sexually transmitted diseases. If you look at the amount of abortions and un, so-called unwanted pregnancies, this, this is a sad uh, case in terms of what is happening in society. And this could be avoided by going back to the prophetic model, and that is where sexuality is enjoyed within the confines of marriage. And the, the energy of the youth uh, is put towards building, towards sports, recreation, and when it comes time for sexuality, it is done within the confines of marriage.